Okay, so good, 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 good morning, everybody, and uh, let's say welcome to, to, to Nice. Uh, I am uh, Gabriel Latsko, working in the Princess Grace Hospital with Professor Nadir Saudi, that everybody knows, of course, and the whole team here in. Uh, thank you uh, to the organizers for the invitation to perform this live case demonstration. So I, I, I don't know how many minutes we have for this first intervention, but let me give you some information about the case that we prepared. Um, uh, so we have a 71 year old man who comes for a persistent uh, AF ablation. He is uh, over eight, he's almost obese, as you can see. He has a type two diabetes and also a long history of hypertension. And actually his uh, atrial fibrillation story started almost 10 years ago with symptomatic both AF and typical flutter. Uh, and that was despite drugs and true drugs have been uh, tried at that time. Uh, amiodarone and flaconide, he had virtually no heart disease. And finally in 2011, he heard he had the first radio frequency ablation for typical flutter at the CTI level. That was performed at the time with the magnetic catheter, which was the Navistar Thermocur RMT, and that allowed sinus rhythm restoration with complete block along the CTI. Uh, and he eventually went well for several years, um, but three years afterwards, he had uh, uh, a recurrence of palpitations uh, and uh, he was put back on drugs, but he developed very quickly uh, a myodaron induced hyperthyroidism and the drug was stopped. Nevertheless, uh, it took some time to the hyperthyroidism to be cured. And uh, four years later, he had, he was uh, normal thyroid function and he was in symptomatic persistent AF. Uh, so we proposed, uh, we, we offered the patient uh, a radio frequency ablation of AF, but by the time this was scheduled, he was in uh, continuous AF uh, from, um, for, uh, for six months. The ablation was performed in October 2018, so last year, and by, by that time you see that he already had, had the dilated left atrium with a volume of 173 milliliters, uh, but the strategy was limited only to pulmonary vein disconnections. Disconnection. That was done with radio frequency using, uh, using a contact force catheter, the, the smart touch, but despite PVI, he was still in ongoing AF and the end of the procedure. Uh, finally, AF um, stopped and he, he, he went spontaneously into uh, ATAC and uh, he had an electrical cardioversion for ATAC and sinus system was restored like this. Some days later. Uh, a few days later. Now, uh, we saw him several months later with a recurrency of uh, persistent and symptomatic AF. Uh, he uh, he can't perform any physical effort because he is very quickly fatigued. Uh, he is, uh, uh, of course, on on, on uh, anticoagulants. He has a pixaman. Uh, he, the, the heart rate is controlled by nadolol, and he has an association of uh, furosemide and remipril. Uh, he has by now a pretty dilated left atrium, and he starts having uh, a, a, a discrete uh, left ventricular dysfunction. The, uh, the, the coronary arteries are still normal, and you see that the bi biology uh, is, uh, is normal for, for somebody on a pixel uh, now, this is the uh, yesterday's evening ECG, and you see he is in AF, and once again, the heart rhythm is controlled, but despite that, he is symptomatic. So, we, we are performing today uh, uh, an AF ablation uh, for this persistent form, which is uh, continuously uh, ongoing for eight to nine months now. Are there any questions about the, the, the case? Okay, so um, what we uh, we are proposing you is um, is is the, the Rhythmia mapping system, uh, and uh, just before opening the live case, we, we mapped uh, after a double transeptal puncture the left atrium, uh, just for you to see what we put as catheters. Let me let me give you a, a big view of the of the of the, the fluoro system. Okay, should. 
it's here you go. So you, you, you see that we put a decapolar catheter into the coronary into the coronary sinus. We have um, a first sheath which allowed to put transeptally the Orion catheter, which is a basket catheter with 64 electrodes, which is now closed because it's in the right inferior pulmonary vein. We also have the robotic sheath, which is the VCAS deflect, you can see it here, and the ablation catheter, which is the Celsius uh, RMT thermocol catheter. That's a f uh, irrigated four millimeter uh, tip uh, uh, catheter uh, with magnets for, uh, for, for magnetic navigation. Now, we, we performed the, the, the map of the left atrium in AF as, uh, with, with the Orion. Uh, and, and this is the, let, let me present you uh, very quickly the result of the map. Um, just switching between screens. So is, are you clearly seeing the Rhythmia screen? Great. So uh, this is the an, an AP view of the of the left atrium, and you see that we reconstructed the the appendage, and he has actually uh, not four but five pulmonary veins. Actually, there is one accessory vein uh, right here, very close to the right superior pulmonary vein. I'm going to see show you the CT scan just afterwards, and this is a voltage map. You you, you see that. The, the, the posterior part of the PVs look, uh, looks pretty nice. Of course, the, the, code, the color code for this bipolar map is gray, uh, it, it, is the, it is the scar tissue. The scar setting is the nominal, nominal one for the time being, which, which is at 0 0.03 millivolts. And let me show you how this uh, geometry is uh, overimposed with the CT scan. Can you decrease, please, the transparency of the CT scan and take away the map for a few seconds? So you can, you, you, you can see the, the real anatomy as it was reconstructed from the CT scan with this uh, uh, supplemental, uh, let's say, let's call it middle vein uh, in, 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 in the right and the, the, the two the classical right PVs, but also the, the, the two uh, left pulmonary veins. Okay. Now let's go back to the map, and let me give you a few comments about, about the mapping process. So some of you are maybe familiar with the Rhythmia system, but this is, a, let's say, a ultra-high density mapping system. And you can see that for this left atrial map, with the volume of 183 milliliters, we acquired more than 48,000 electrograms. Uh, that took a little bit less than half an hour, but we really took our time in order to build this map. And, and uh, all these electrograms are, uh, let's say, contact uh, bipolar electrograms. They are, of course, uh, automatically annotated by the system. So we have the voltage information, but also the activation information. But we'll talk a little bit later about the activation information in, 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 in AF with, with this contact system. What I would like you to show at the, this point in time is that we demonstrated that there was a reconnection for two of the um, uh, PVs. First of all, the, uh, the right inferior PV, and you can see that inside this PV there is a small island of uh, preserved potential above uh, 0 0.5 millivolts. Let me, uh, let me select some of the electrograms in order to show you the potentials inside the right, uh, uh, right inferior PV at the time of mapping. So you can see here uh, all the uh, electrograms on the Orion catheter and uh, how clearly uh, we, we demonstrate the reconnection of this vein. But we also think that we have reconnection of the left superior PV. So let's, let, let us turn the map to, to, to that. Can you, Emmanuel? turn the map so you can see that in the superior part of the ridge we have also an area of preserved potential with some very fragmented and continuous potentials there so we, we, we really think that we, we, we have also a, a, a partial reconnection of the left superior PV. So our strategy will be first of all to once again disconnect these two PVs that are reconnected 
And just before, as I was uh, listening in parallel to the transmission from Rotterdam, I started delivering some radio frequency um, applications uh, around the right inferior PV, as you can see here. Uh, and you, you can see on the live EP recording system that uh, when compared, let me, let me give you a big image of the live EP recording system. Okay, so... Okay, so this was the initial recording by the Orion catheter in the right um, inferior PV just before the delivering the radio frequency. And you can see that we, uh, let's say, cleaned up some of those, but we still have on, on three arms of the basket catheter some residual potentials. So we are going to continue now to deliver some, some RF around this antero inferior part of the right inferior PV where, where the, 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 the high voltage suggests uh, uh, reconnection. Thank you. That was a, a great uh, description. So we want to ask some questions. Uh, Please. Anyone in the audience questions? I'll start from mine. So can you specifically comment on your two steerable uh, transeptal sheets you use in this procedure? Uh, what type of sheets are these? How specific? Okay, so the 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 steerable, yeah, the the steerable um, the steerable robotic sheets. It's it's called Vicas Deflect, and this actually allows um, the the remote manipulation of the sheets in the in, in the same time uh, as we manipulate the magnetic catheter, and actually we have uh, uh, a device um, which allows. Uh, several degrees of movement. We can, uh, of course, uh, deflect and undeflect the, the, the sheaths. We can advance and retract the sheaths, but we can also rotate the sheaths. So we, we really have all the, uh, um, all, all the freedom in order to manipulate remotely the sheaths. The sheaths is uh, connected uh, through the V drive system. Um, so we, it's, it's, it's a part of, of, of the robotic system that we can manipulate at the same time the sheaths of the ablation catheter and the catheter itself. Okay, now what, what you, you can also appreciate on the mapping system, even, even though there is no integration between the two systems, is that we, we, we can visualize impedance-based by the electrodes that are embedded in the, in the sheaths, the sheaths itself. And you see how clearly this corresponds to the fluoro image where we have the sheath inside the left atrial, uh, inside the left atrium, and, 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 and afterwards the loop with the ablation catheter, which is uh, oriented towards the ostium of the right inferior PV for, for, for ablation. So the, the other uh, two questions I would have, the one is the secondary question. So VCAT sheaths, it's not something which is universally used by, uh, by magnetic operators. So what is, your okay. impr what is your impression of the learning curve on this tool? Uh, do you use stimulators to train people before allowing it to, you know, to be manipulated by new operators? Okay, so we, we have now, a, let's say, a several year long experience with, with this, this robotic sheath. And what we uh, demonstrated is that for uh, PVI for for AF ablation with a, with a target of pulmonary uh, circumferential pulmonary vein disconnection, when compared to a non-steerable sheath, it actually allowed us, and we we published this initial initial experience in in, in Europace about five years ago. Um, we demonstrated that we can obtain um, the disconnection of the PVs uh, quicker. And we 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 deliver less radio frequency for the right PVs than than with the non uh, steerable or with the manual. Actually, the the, the control group was a manually controlled steerable steerable sheets, and at the time we were using the Agilis. Now, why is that? Most probably because this kind of approach, where the tip of the sheets it's uh, leftward oriented, like in the left part of the left atrium, uh, allows you to have an anchoring point on the other side for the magnetic catheter and not at the level of the septum. And actually, this eases the manipulation 
for the for the for the right PVs with all the three magnets in the magnetic field. So we we we, we actually hypothesized, hypothesized that this is maybe the explanation for for a, a quicker a quicker and more efficient uh, uh, ablation and disconnection for the right PVs by by using the robotic shears. Thank you. So the other question I have is, uh, you use Rhythmia and you just demonstrated that you have some incremental or, or spared voltage in uh, anterior portion of left superior, superior vein. Yes. How good Rhythmia is in discriminating far field uh, recording from the appendage uh, uh, to the okay. kind of local recording from the adjacent uh, uh, venous wall? Okay, so w w w let's l l l let me answer this question by by, by using a let's say a pretty popular paper from from Ella Dante, which was published I think three to four years ago, when he in a very small series of patients uh, uh, actually catheterized each of the PVs simultaneously by a lasso catheter. Um, and, and, and the Orion catheter, the basket catheter. And actually he demonstrated in that series that in 30% uh, uh, of the cases where the lasso catheter did not record any residual potential and the diagnostic was a, of, a, of a disconnected pulmonary vein, he was still able to record potentials with the Orion catheter just because he has smaller flat electrodes uh, and, and which are very closely spaced. Uh, now, in, in 30 percent uh, more potentials. Now, in this 30 uh, percent category, there were only 10 percent which were explained by far fields from the, from, from the appendage. Though the, so the, and this was demonstrated by, by, by differential pen pacing, of course. So th there is an uh, let's say a uh, um, 20 percent more accurate diagnosis of persistent uh, connection of the PVs when you use the basket catheter, the Orion versus the lasso. It, it I don't know if that. Uh, it sounds as uh, you rely on Rhythmia, you know, um, uh, uh, as uh, you know, as a as a good discriminator, and you would consider it a valuable target. Yeah, I, 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 I think that it, for, for, for a local electrogram interpretation, it is maybe the most reliable uh, b because of the size, once again, the size of the electrodes, their unidirectional uh, characteristic, but also the very uh, closely spaced uh, bipolar electrograms. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh... Uh, Dr. Latko, any, any, any new observations in your case you want to share with us before we will switch to the actual session uh, presentation? So m m m maybe I should, I should go on and, 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 and perform the, the disconnection of the PVs and, and then if you want to come back later, I, I will uh, give some th thoughts and show you some of our strategy of, of extra PV driver ablation in persistent IF using this technology. Thanks a lot. That was a great uh, presentation, and we'll come back to you. Great. So, welcome back to Monaco. I'm I'm really jealous. You must be having very interesting sessions there that I am missing, but uh, still going on with the case. So, you remember that we um, uh, we were uh, starting to ablate around the two reconnected pulmonary veins. So, let me show you what this gave. Um, now, this is the this is the EP recording system, the, and let me show you the initial potential. Right. So, somebody is touching the mouse there, please. Okay, so this is the right inferior PV. You see here the equatorial bi um, bipoles of the Orion basket just, uh, just before ablation. Uh, so we gave, let me show you on the arrhythmia system, um, the, um, uh, the, uh, the posterior view with the lesions that we gave around the uh, posterior inferior aspect of the um, uh, right inferior pulmonary vein, where we had uh, islands of, uh, of preserved voltage uh, here and here, so the tags for that are are here. So you, you see that we performed 
uh, this this line uh, just uh, as central as possible around the the the, the, uh, the, the ostium and and find the, the complete disconnection was obtained at the level of the corina here so uh, let, let me show you what this gave uh, on the uh, orion recordings inside the right inferior pulmonary veins vein okay this is it so this is the this is the comparison with the, the the recording of the bipolar potentials hugely amplified because you can see the baseline noise uh, on all these equatorial uh, uh, bipoles and the second uh, reconnected vein was the left superior pv and these are the potentials inside the left superior pv just before ablation let me show you how this looked on the map so we are still on this uh, initial left atrial map, the bipolar map. This is the appendage. And you can see that we had some preserved voltage here in the, uh, uh, in the upper part of the, of, of the ridge. Okay, so uh, once we did that, we, we actually uh, completely disconnected the left superior pulmonary vein uh, also. Okay, that's it. Okay, so this is the final recording with the Orion in the left superior pulmonary vein. Uh, so we, we, we consider that we had complete disconnection uh, of both uh, reconnected veins. Uh, are there any questions for, for that aspect at the moment or uh, shall I continue with the extra PV ablation? Uh, so uh, can you s show us is your, s your set of lesion in, uh, in uh, left-sided uh, carina? Uh, sorry, left-sided the ridge? Yeah, for, I, 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 I think that the easiest way to do that is to cut off the, the appendage. Uh, so let, 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 let me just exchange with, with our um, clinical field engineer. He's, uh, he's doing it just now, and you can see the set of lesions. Okay, just starting in front on the, at the level of the corina on that preserved potential uh, area and then also uh, having done some lesions on the roof where we had some intermediate potentials. Um, okay. Can you comment, so, so uh, many people here don't uh, use Rhythmia yet. So uh, can you comment on, um, uh, on your uh, ablation tags? Are these, you know, uh, similarly reflecting uh, uh, time or amount of uh, energy? Yeah, a a a actually we are, we, are, we are taking one tag per, per radio frequency delivery. We are giving pretty short pulses, usually uh, limited to, to 20 seconds if the initial impedance decrease is satisfactory. And for all these lesions, we had a, a very nice decrease of, of at least 10 ohms for each of the lesions. We, we set up the power to 45 watts for the, for the uh, applications on the corina and at 40 watts for the applications at the roof level. Um, but we also uh, took care to, to look at the bipolar uh, electrogram uh, modification during the delivery and uh, in order to, to have the change reflecting uh, uh, transmurality, transmural lesion. So all these crit criteria were, let's say, validated before uh, taking the tag, okay? The, the, the duration, the impedance decrease and the electrogram modification. Okay, thanks. So, so uh, my question was so a little more about the uh, cosmetics of the presentation. Uh, uh, does Rhythmia uh, in any way uh, uh, reflecting amount of energy or time spent deposited, or those are just standard, you know? Okay, okay. We have, for, we have for, for, for the time being, these tags are taken, I, I taken manually. There is no auto tagging feature yet. Uh, the, w there was one constructed and we had the chance to, 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 to use it in, in a research program, but it's not still, it's not yet commercially available. It will be in, be in a few months. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, no, we have no more questions. Uh, so. Now that you've done this, what's the strategy for addressing? Okay. So that's that's 
Okay, so our our um, our strategy is that we are targeting extra pulmonary vein drivers, and uh, the the way that we are looking for them is is the following one. We we developed um, the, the let's say the concept of of uh, um, sequential ultra high density mapping for 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 driver localization uh, in in persistent AF uh, by assuming that if drivers exist and outside the, the pulmonary ve uh, vein antra and the, if they are stable or recurrently uh, let's say occurring in the same area like uh, the panoramic mapping systems tended to um, tended to demonstrate we should be able to localize them also with the with, with the with the with the sequential mapping if we have ultra high density and uh, a system which is powerful enough to perform some, let's say, uh, statistical uh, interpretation of activation. And uh, as you noticed, we have this ultra high density map, we have uh, over 48,000 points, and, and you can appreciate that, and this is the activation map uh, here that I'm actually showing you, and you can appreciate that the system actually puts a color on the, on, on the map like it to do for any organized rhythm. And, and you can see that in this area, for example, if the majority of points uh, are, uh, are actually annotated uh, for, for the time localization as green, actually the whole area will be colored uh, in green. It's a, once again, it's a statistical uh, interpretation of, of the local activation time, but we feel that this can really help for localizing drivers. So let, 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 let me show you how, how we do this. And in order to, 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 to demonstrate it, I will very briefly, br briefly take out the points because it will, the, the, the interpretation will be uh, easier. Let, let me hide also the, 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 the cutout of the, of the left atrial appendage. Okay. And let me uh, ask our engineer to, to play the activation once again. Okay, so here, here we go. Can you uh, at this anterior aspect of the base of the left anterior appendage, let me retract the ablation catheter in order to ease the visualization of this site. Okay, so would, of course, I, 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 I think anybody in the room before, before loving robotics uh, love electrograms and and, uh, and and mapping and activation mapping because this is what we all learn first and this is what we all do. So uh, what I would like you to, uh, to to appreciate is that at this spot, for example, we can see uh, uh, an activation weight front which looks to be rotating around the central point. Would, would, uh, would everybody agree with that? Okay, there, there's no answer, so I shall go on. Are you still hearing me? We hear you, but it's uh, partially, intermittently, not so. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry for that. So did you, did you hear that I, I was actually focusing your attention on this spot where uh, activation mapping is suggesting that we might have a predominantly rotating uh, activation pattern around the center point. Yes, we, we can recognize that, uh, albeit my eyes are telling me there are about uh, six or seven of such areas. No, of course, of course, but let, 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 let's focus on, 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 on this one first, okay? So uh, let, let, let's check that this is not an over-interpretation of the map. So I, I, I'm just going to be sure that in this area we have enough electrograms in order to be reliable and not just having a reconstruction that so i hope you all agree and now let's take a look at these electrograms and 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 you can see here all the electrograms that were required with the orion catheter during several consecutive beats and i hope that you, you can also appreciate how let's say uh, consistent between successive beats this activation pattern is now the, the we we can uh, what we can also do 
is is try to beyond activation uh, the pattern of activation and and beyond this consistency between subsequent beats try to analyze the coverage of the local cycle length which we can be can be measured on the on the, on the rhythmia system of course so you you, you can see that I'm, I'm i'm using the caliper in order to measure it live okay can can, can you do it for me em em emmanuel please yeah this is it so we have I, 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 I go on. So we have a local cycle length, which is very short, of 142 milliseconds. And, and, and you can see that we have potential within that cycle length for 118 milliseconds. So we have a pretty, uh, let's say, complete for this bit coverage. And if I go on to the subsequent, to the following bit, we have almost a 100% coverage of the cycle length. And it goes on like this for the uh, following two beats. Now, let me let me uh, diminish the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the 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 speed, and you can see how consistent for several beats this is. Now, this is sequential mapping. Of course, afterwards the, the Orion catheter was moved, but we we try to map the entire cavity as as uh, in a very detailed way and come back at least at all the interesting spots several times in order to see if those, uh, let's say, rotational patterns of activation are still there, uh, let's say, a few minutes later. So uh, we, we do, of course, our best. This is still a, a manual and visual interpretation of electrograms and, and activation mapping. Uh, there, there is work being done on an uh, automatic tool in order to highlight automatically all these areas, uh, but, uh, but we, we think that it's pretty much reliable. So, for for the, for the moment, just because just before um, opening again the, the live session, we 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 ablated uh, three of, of of such spots. This one, but also two other. I'm sorry. Let me let me manipulate this, Emmanuel. Uh, two two other rotational drivers. One which was localized here, and let me show you the how the, how the local potentials look like at a higher speed. And you can see that even here we had a pretty, we have a pretty consistent pattern of activation. The local cycle length it's even a little bit shorter uh, at about 100. And 30 milliseconds, and, but and, and 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 the coverage is uh, of of almost 100 milliseconds, and this was the case for this this other spot, just just uh, uh, at the level of the roof, and you can see once again how how nicely uh, the the potentials recorded by the Orion catheter are consistent between consecutive beats and 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 cover the entire cycle length. If I take away the uh, the, the electrograms, the, the, the electrodes, maybe you can, you can once again appreciate that this spot, for example, has this uh, rotational activation pattern uh, around it. Now, you can also see on the map some black tags. So this corresponds to what we visually annotated as fragmented potentials, just uh, in, in the common accepted sense of visual fragmentation while mapping. And and actually, we do for a question we as as a, as a uh, let's say a pinpoint to, to 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 show us that we might find something something interesting in in that area. And you can appreciate that they are a little bit displaced with respect to, with what we we really find on the on the activation mapping. At least these two ones are are are, are completely due to are due to a collision uh, mostly when you look at the activation mapping and 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 not to to to, to a pure uh, local driver so we we I, I can show you what we did so far we did a few a, a few uh, lesions um, it's a little bit lower okay so we, we ablated these spots here and this point at the, at the base of the appendage that we I, I showed you earlier, and now I am going to continue with the interpretation of the map and address the other sp spots. Um, you a few later, or now if you want, I can uh, tell you give you some information about the, the results of this strategy in our experience. Uh, no, we will have to move on to to the uh, uh, to the session. Uh, uh, how uh, much longer do you expect to spend uh, with, with a patient on a table? 
oh, uh, we we shall we shall continue to 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 ablate all the drivers that we can diagnose. The the mean average number of spots for for one map is about seven. And if afterwards we are still in AF, we are going to remap and see if we have some residu residual drivers. So it all depends on how, how it try, goes on. We will try to come uh, back to you. Uh, uh, and uh, we will move now to the live session. Thanks a lot. Yeah, just a very brief update on where you're at. This, this is Nadir Saudi. Gabriel is just manipulating the Orion at the moment. And uh, we gave uh, several pulses on what we identified uh, as possible rotors, and uh, it didn't do uh, really something. And uh, now that we are doing a remap, there are very long periods where the uh, an organization appears, and it uh, while we are mapping, and it goes and stays uh, in the in the, f the form of a regular atrial tachycardia for periods of uh, 15, 20 seconds and reverts back to AF and we continue, but it's a clear improvement compared to what we've seen before because we didn't occur uh, this kind of uh, prolonged period of organization uh, um, before uh, we started ablating these uh, potential rotors. So we will continue and uh, continue to ablate and I'm pretty in the fact finally uh, get rid of these tachycardias and hopefully restore sinus rhythm. That's uh, where we're... Back to sinus rhythm or at some point will you say enough's enough and cardiovert and, and move on? Well, that, that time will tell. Time will tell because if, if, it, uh, if it's forever and if it's constantly changing, after let's say four or five hours, we will uh, stop and uh, not cardiovert, we'll wait because in our experience very often Sinus rhythm continuously resumes in the hours that follows, and patient may then stay in sinus rhythm for a very, very prolonged period. So we will not shock, no. Very good. We'll well, we want to thank you very much for your participation today. It's really been an outstanding opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for your attention, and have a good meal.